Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Dieterle. I'm reading a book called A Boy Named Boomer by NFL quarterback Boomer Esiason, illustrated by Jacqueline Rogers. Uh, this book also has photos and it's kind of neat to mention that a portion of the book's proceeds goes to cystic fibrosis research. And here we go. Hello, reader. My name is Norman Julius Esiason, but everyone calls me Boomer. Boomer is a football word that means kicker. Before I was born, I kicked so much that my parents called me Boomer. But I didn't become a kicker. I became a quarterback because I love to throw the ball. I became a professional football player on May 1st, 1984. It was a happy day for me. Best of all, many people, family, and friends shared my happiness. When I was a boy, I lived with my father and two sisters in a house on Long Island. In some ways, I felt different from other children. I had white hair. I had an odd name. I was left-handed. But I liked being different. In many ways, I was like all other children. I loved sports. I loved school. I loved my friends. I loved my family. This book is about me when I was around your age. I hope you like it. Sincerely, Boomer Esiason. January, The Catch. I didn't have a real football yet. I had a yellow plastic football with holes in it. My father threw it to me. I didn't catch it. <coughs> Don't be afraid of it, he said. You have to love the ball. If you love it, you will catch it. He threw it to me again. I remembered to love the ball. This time, I caught it. <coughs> February, the Valentine. On the day before Valentine's Day, my teacher told the class to bring in cards. We didn't have to sign the cards. They could be secret Valentines. My sister Robin took me to a store to buy a card for a girl named Cindy. I also bought her a necklace and a bracelet with hearts on them. On Valentine's Day, I put them into the Valentine mailbox. Cindy took out her presents. The boys and girls looked at me and giggled. <laughs> They guessed that those gifts were from me. My friends teased me. I was embarrassed. Some boys in my class didn't like girls. But I did. I have always liked girls. March, the hit. In my neighborhood, we loved sports. Baseball, hockey, basketball, football. Many kids went to baseball tryouts. When it was my turn, I hit every pitch. I hit deep blind drives. I hit the ball again and again. The kids watched me, the parents watched me, my dad watched me. On that day, I knew I had a special talent. On that day, I knew I was an athlete. April, just us. April 17th was a Wednesday, but I didn't go to school and my dad didn't go to work. We woke up early before the sun came up. We packed our rods, our reels, our bait, our hooks. We drove to a dock and boarded a fishing boat. We fished all day. It was a very happy birthday for me. May, the pickup game. A bunch of kids went at the park to play baseball. We chose up sides. I was the best player, so I was a captain. I got to pick the second player. I looked around at the kids. Tommy was the best batter. Mike could catch. Danny ran fast. Should I pick Tommy, Mike, or Danny? Then... I saw Steve. He couldn't hit. He couldn't catch. He couldn't run. Steve was always picked last, but this time Steve wouldn't be last. Steve Z, I said. Everyone looked surprised. Tommy was picked up by the other team. You're going to lose, he whispered. It was a tough game. Steve struck out, was tagged out, and dropped a fly ball. My team was losing. I told you so said Tommy. I had to play better than ever, and I did. We won the game. I was glad to have Steve on my team. It made me work harder and be a better player. After that, I always picked the weakest player to be on my team. I hoped that one day someone would pick me for something I'm not good at. June, to dad, love Boomer. Every Saturday morning, my dad and I shopped at the supermarket. I liked that. Sometimes we also went to sporting goods stores. We looked at bats, mitts, and hockey sticks. 
baseballs, basketballs, and footballs. That was great. And sometimes my dad took me to ball games. That was the best of all. We saw the great Willie Mays hit and field. Willie loved that ball. I wanted to give my father something special for Father's Day, but I didn't have money. and I wasn't good at making things. One day, I was playing catch in my yard when the ball rolled under a bush. Also under the bush was a tiny sapling. It had grown from a seed from a nearby tree. The sapling was hidden from the sun and crowded by the bush. I dug up the sapling and planted it where it would get some sun and some space. Then I called for my dad to come outside. I showed him the sapling. It's for you, I said. Happy Father's Day. The sapling is now a big maple tree. It stands near the house where my father still lives. July, the fort. We had a great neighborhood of kids, lots of kids. We lived next to a state park. We played in the playgrounds, on the fields, in the woods, on the beaches. Best of all, we built forts. I worked on a fort with my friends, Michael, Carl, and Warren. It was a big hole in the ground, wide and deep. Then we dug a trench that led to our fort. It took many days. Finally, we were done. We sat in our fort. We talked about our fort. It was a good fort. It was a great fort. It was the best fort in the neighborhood. It was the best fort in the world. Then we heard about another fort. Someone said it was better than our fort. It was bigger than our fort. So we went to wreck the other fort. We waited until the boys left their fort. We didn't know how long they would be gone, so we worked quickly. We filled their giant hole with the dirt that was piled around it. We filled their trench, too. Then we ran back to our own fort. But our fort was gone. Wrecked. So we built another fort. August, my pony. My family took a trip to my uncle's farm. I saw farm animals, chickens, cows, goats, pigs, and ponies. I helped feed the chickens, I helped milk the cows, and I played with the goats, the pigs, and the ponies. I loved the ponies. I begged my dad to let me have one. I would feed it and groom it and care for it. My dad said it was too much work for me. I begged and begged. Finally, my dad let me take a pony home. Her name was Rusty. But ponies are a lot of work. I fed Rusty, groomed her, and cared for her. I had less time for friends, less time for sports. It was too much work for me. My dad was right. Rusty went back to the farm. September, back to school. I liked school. I liked being with many children, playing together, talking together, laughing together, learning together. I asked many questions. I was very curious. One day, a boy in my class brought four frogs in for show and tell. He kept them in a glass jar. The class went out for recess. My friend, Michael Kelly, and I went into the room. We let the frogs out of the jar. They hopped all over the classroom. Then everyone came back. The boys and the girls chased the frogs. Norman, said my teacher. My teacher only called me Norman when I was in trouble, and I was in big trouble. She sent Michael and me to see the principal. I liked the principal, and he liked me, but he wouldn't like what I did. I was scared. The principal wore a dark suit. He was a giant man. He sat behind a giant desk. Norman, he said, what were you thinking? I did not know what to say. I could not remember what I had been thinking. I'm sorry, I said. I went back to my classroom. All eyes were on me. I'm sorry, I said to the class. That day, I learned about thinking before doing. October, Hockey Halloween. I was a hockey player for Halloween. Rod Gilbert was my favorite hockey player. He wore number seven. Burt Jones was my favorite football player. He wore number seven, too. The great batting champion, Mickey Mantle, also wore number seven. I always wore number seven. I still do. November. Thanks. One day, I wanted to surprise my family. 
I would bake a cake all by myself. My dog, Fawny, could help me. I got a bowl and a spoon. I took out the flour. It spilled all over me. All over Fawny. All over the floor. Then my dad walked in. Baking was harder than I thought. On Thanksgiving Day, we went to my grandmother's house. I said grace. I gave thanks for my family and my friends. My grandmother had made a turkey dinner. It was much like other turkey dinners all across America. But Grandma's turkey dinner ended with a special German cake called Stolen. No one has ever been able to make a cake as good as Grandma's. Not even me and Fanny. December, the gift. My dad, my sisters, and I trimmed the Christmas tree. Then we set up my toy train. Late at night, I put on a coat over my pajamas. My father took me outside to look for Santa Claus. We walked through the neighborhood. We looked at every rooftop and every chimney. We searched the skies. We listened for bells. We didn't see Santa. But when we got home, my stocking was full, and Santa had left me a brand new bike. My dad gave me a present, too, an oval package wrapped in red with a green bow. It was a football, a real one. I loved that ball. Boomer's football career. For his first Christmas, Boomer got a tiny toy football. He liked to throw the ball to everyone in his family, even to his grandmother. When he was 10, Boomer joined the neighborhood football team, but his favorite games were pickup games, where he would just go to the park and play with whoever was there. Boomer played quarterback for East Islip Junior High School. When he was in eighth grade, his team was winning every game. In the last quarter of the last game, Boomer got hurt. He twisted his ankle and had to stop playing. The game ended in a tie. Boomer went to East Islip High School, where he played basketball, baseball, and football. His high school football team played 40 games and won 36 games. One year, the coaches of Suffolk County, County chose his team as the best in the county and gave them the Rutgers Trophy. In three years, Boomer threw 29 touchdown passes. In his senior year, the high school coaches of Long Island chose Boomer for the all-Long Island team. This means that the coaches voted for the best high school football players in each position, and they picked Boomer as the best quarterback. Boomer's high school coach, Sal Siampi, knew that Boomer had a special talent. Boomer had a very strong throwing arm. Boomer knew that he was very good. He helped his teammates do their best, but most of all, Boomer liked to score the points that would win the game. He always thought he would win, but he wasn't afraid to lose. At first, Boomer did not get into a top football college, but his luck changed. The University of Maryland's team, the Terrapins, needed a quarterback, and Boomer was ready. Boomer broke many Terrapin passing records and led his team to three bowl games. Boomer was on two All-American teams. Sports writers vote for players to be on All-American teams. The All-Long Island and All-American teams are made up of the best players from these areas in each position. The teams never play any games, but it is a great honor to be named to them. Boomer was the first quarterback drafted to the National Football League NFL in 1984. He was drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals. In 1988, Boomer led the Bengals to Super Bowl XXIII. He was named NFL Most Valuable Player by the Associated Press. Sports writers and editors vote for this award. He was also voted NFL Player of the Year by the writers and editors of the Sporting News. He joined the New York Jets in 1993. Boomer is the all-time leading left-handed passer in the NFL. He has thrown the ball for more yards, thrown the ball for more touchdowns, and completed more passes than any other left-handed quarterback in football history.